And this first testimony is with regards to uh, work ethic. Uh, if you're going to be playing table tennis, it's going to take just a tremendous amount of effort to be able to get a decent result. And I had to learn that from uh, one of the greatest players in U.S. table tennis history, and that's Sean O'Neill. I, uh, I was 16 years old. I had just uh, moved to the Olympic Training Center, and I was amongst all the top juniors in the country, and I was pretty, you know, I was pretty hot on myself. I said, yeah, I'm good. You know, and, and I was clearly the most athletic there. Um, and at this time, Sean O'Neill was in Seoul, Korea uh, in 1988 playing the Olympics. So when he got back, he, you know, just kind of surveyed the, you know, the new group. And one day we were sitting, eating dinner, and he was like, you know, you guys aren't doing jack. You know, forks drop, you know, maybe everybody's a little taken back. Well, he had just came from the Olympics and maybe he has something to offer that's more than what we all understand because he just came back from the pinnacle of sport. So he just said, you guys aren't doing all the necessary things you need to be doing to uh, be the best player you could be. And I just moved to the Olympic Training Center. I'm training every day. Like, what more, you know, could I do? And just before we went to dinner, just before we left for dinner, he said, uh, Brian, you want to uh, run with me tomorrow morning? And I'm flattered. I'm thinking, oh, you know, maybe he thinks I'm a talented kid. He wants to, you know, maybe, you know, work out with me. <laughs> yeah, I'm so ignorant. Well, the next morning, we meet outside the dorms. We do like a grandmother type of trot across the whole Olympic Training Center. And I'm thinking if, if he continues to run like this, he's gonna get smoked well as soon as we got out of those gates of the Olympic Training Center he took off I remember it was Boulder Avenue he basically just gave me a lesson in running um, we ran to this place called the dump it's infamous it's a four mile run and then it's a half a mile up and a half a mile back so uh, it's basically a nine mile run and he didn't wait for me. Well, he didn't drop me the first four miles just because every time he left me, he got stopped by traffic. So by the time we got to the dump, we didn't go straight up the dump. Um, actually, we did go straight up the dump. We didn't go around. Most people go around. We went straight up the dump. I'm talking about through diapers and glass and sticker bras. And by the time we got back down the dump, he basically just turned on what I call the Ethiopian. He just didn't look back and he just left me and I still tried to keep up with him. I ran my hardest, and by the time I got to the dorms, my hands were shaking, and I uh, was hot and cold, and I sat down and ate the omelet, and then went back to the dorms and threw the omelet up, and I didn't go to school for like two days. And just before I was about to uh, leave the cafeteria, one of my friends said he gave you the run, didn't he? And I said, yeah, and I didn't really know what that meant, but he initiated almost all the kids that came to the Olympic Training Center with that run. And the next day he says, I'm gonna show you how to train. And four months later, he won the U.S. Men National title. And we were at Caesars Palace. He won it on center court and they brought out $5,000 in gold coins. And he just sat on top of it. And all I could think was, man, <laughs> That's work ethic.